This video presentation is entitled Entity Relationship Diagramming, and I'm Dr. James Renault from Shawnee State University. In this presentation, we're going to be going over how to draw an entity relationship diagramming. The following things will be discussed and defined. What is an entity? What is an attribute? And the three types of attributes, regular attributes, primary key attributes, and foreign key attributes. A relation and the cardinality of a relation will, will all be discussed. Entity relationship diagrams are a very commonly used technique for modeling a database, its tables, and the relationships between the tables. The specific style of diagram used in this presentation is known as the crow's foot diagram. There are other modeling styles like the Chen model, but the crow's foot is in my experience, one of the, the, the more commonly used methods. An entity relationship diagram is made up of three main things. Entities, attributes, which are part of entities, and then the relationships between the various entities. The first thing I want to then do is go into what is an entity. An entity is something that we care about. It's something that we collect data about a thing, a person, an action, something that we, that we care about. All instances of an entity type all share common attributes or share common structure. Um, for instance, all students basically follow the student structure and have a single structure, or all inventory items uh, follow a, a standard structure. In an entity relationship diagram, entities are represented by a rectangle divided into two sections with a horizontal line. The, above the line, you place the name of the entity, and then below the line, we're going to place the various attributes within the entity. Let's start by drawing a few entities. For instance, here is a generic entity called Entity, and it has a couple of attributes associated with it. Again, it's a rectangle with the top bar, the first line, being segregated and containing the name of the entity, and then below the bar in the bottom part are the list of attributes. Now that we've talked about entities, let's talk about attributes. Each entity that we define has attributes. They're the common data types, they're the, the, data, the types of data that represent that specific type of entity. Attributes don't contain specific values. We're not worrying about modeling values at this point. I want to model the various aspects or, again, attributes of an entity. For instance, if we were modeling a student entity, attributes would include student ID number, last name, first name, a home address, a major, that kind of thing. Notice that we're not getting into specific values of which major or specific values of, of whose names and what names. We just create a definition defining what types of data and what classes of data and what bits of data we want to collect, not the specific data that we do collect. There are, uh, there's usually one or a small group of attributes that we call the primary key. These attributes are used to uniquely identify an entity. For instance, in that little example I just gave, a student ID number would be the unique attribute that defines a student. Only one student will ever have that student ID number. There are times when we concatenate multiple attributes together, um, to make what's called a concatenated primary key. But in most tables, we don't do that. In an entity relationship diagram, it is typically done so that the entities, the attributes that uniquely identify the entity that are the primary key are underlined. And we usually put them up at the top of the list of attributes because they're important. Foreign key attributes are used to connect two tables together. It's the primary key of one table that becomes the foreign key on another table, and that's how relationships are actually created and implemented. 
because there isn't a, a way to underline or to mark them, what we usually do is we put an open parenthesis in the letters FK out beside the name of the entity. That way we know that it's a foreign key to some other table. In detailed entity relationship diagrams, we'll also define what the um, data type of the attribute is. Is it text? Is it an integer? Is it a decimal number? Is it a blob? Is it? And we'll go into some of those in future SQL videos as we as we spend more time studying entity relationship diagrams and databases in general. For instance, here is an entity that describes a person. I've got a primary key of a person ID. I give each person a number, and you can see that by the word int, saying that it's an integer attribute. And the attributes I'm collecting about people are last name, first name, email, phone, and birthday. Now, birthday does have an underscore, but the diagram kind of, kind of covered it up. Um, I really don't like seeing spaces in, in attribute names when you're defining them. It makes writing the SQL statements that we're going to do later when we're actually implementing databases more difficult. So I usually put in an underscore or I do it in camel case where I capitalize the first letter in each subsequent word. But you can see here an example of an entity with several attributes, including a primary key defined. Defining entities and their attributes is a pretty straightforward kind of, kind of task. The more difficult thing that we do in an entity relationship diagram are relationships. Relationships are what we connect tables together. When we uh, have two tables that, that have a relationship between them, we say that this relationship has a cardinality. Um, it, what is the relationship? Is it a zero or one, uh, zero, uh, is it a, a one to one relationship between two tables or a one to many relationship between two tables or potentially a many to many uh, relationship between tables? On our, uh, I mean, and, and that becomes extremely difficult uh, to, to figure out, but that's why we model instead of jumping straight into creating a database without fully understanding what our data looks like. For example, let's think about the relationship. Imagine you have an entity called state and you have another entity called city. Um, a state has many cities, makes sense, but a city belongs to one state. So the relationship between cities and states would be one to many. The relationship between states to countries would be one to many. Um, there are lots of other relationships and we'll go through them, but let's, let's look at the symbols we use now to draw relationships. Actually, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about more relationships. Relationships are implemented by placing the primary key of one table as a foreign key on another table. Um, in a one-to-many relationship, the primary key of the one table is placed as a foreign key on the many table. In a one-to-one -one relationship, the primary key of one of the tables is placed as a foreign key on one of the other tables, and maybe the foreign primary key of the other table is, so they swap foreign keys and primary keys if you, we need to go and traverse that, that link in both directions. So uh, a primary key is placed as a foreign key on the other table to implement relationships. Relationships in an entity relationship diagram are drawn as lines, and on each end of a line we put a symbol describing how the relationship is and the cardinality or the number of instances that, that the relationship represents. If the line end has two bars, it represents one and only one. If a relationship has a bar and a zero, it represents one or zero. Boy, that almost looks like a one and a zero, doesn't it? Uh, the other two ends that you will commonly see on a crow's foot in an entity relationship diagram is the symbol for one or more 
and it's represented as a greater than and a bar representing more and one. And then you also see zero or more, which is represented by a greater than and a zero representing more and zero. So the four ends of, a, of the crow's feet in an entity relationship diagram are one and only one, one or zero, one or more, and zero or more. So let's look at a simple entity relationship diagram where we're modeling manufacturers to vehicles. Let's think about vehicles like cars and buses and trucks and things. A vehicle is manufactured by one manufacturer, but a manufacturer can manufacture many vehicles. Um, you can see the primary key of the manufacturer table. Manufacturer ID is a foreign key on the vehicle table to represent the one-to-many relationship. Now, to read a crow's foot, and I've seen lots of students read them backwards and create them backwards. So kind of put a word in the middle, a verb in the middle, and you read this as a manufacturer builds zero or more vehicles. So you read it left to right, a manufacturer builds zero to more vehicles. And you read it right to left saying a vehicle builds one and only one, a vehicle is built by one and only one manufacturer. So you read the foot on the other end of the, of the verb, a manufacturer builds one or more vehicles a vehicle is built by one and only one manufacturer. Again, you've got to be extremely careful not to get those crow's feet flipped around. I, I see that in a lot of assignments. And uh, slow down and read the, read the diagram before you move on to the next step. Here's another example entity relationship diagram. Imagine you have a chain or a group of bookstores, and each bookstore is represented in the bookstore table with store number, address, city, state, zip, man manager name, and phone. And you have books. Books all have an international standard book number, which is primary key that represents a specific book, title, author, publisher, subject, and the manufacturer suggested retail price of each book. The relationship between book and bookstore, if you don't look at what's here right now, but stop and think of the relationship between a book and a bookstore. A book can be in many bookstores, and a bookstore has many books. So it's what we call a many-to-many -many relationship. What we have done here is I've put a table in the middle, that bridges the bookstore and the book together, and I've called it book inventory. And it contains the ISBN number of the book. It contains the store number of the store. It contains the quantity on hand of the book within each individual store. And it then includes the price that that store is selling it for, because two different stores could be selling the same book for a different price. So you can see that to implement the quantity on hand for the store book combination, we have to have a separate table. Notice also that the ISBN number for the book is the primary key on the book table, and it's a foreign key on the book inventory table. Notice that the store number is the primary key on the bookstore table and a foreign key on the book inventory table. And I can concatenate the ISBN number and store number together to form the primary key of the book inventory table. Let's read these crow's feet and, and just go through and read these crow's feet again. A book is in the inventory of zero or more, book. A, a book has zero or more inventories. An inventory belongs to only one book. A store has many inventories and an inventory belongs to one and only one store. So you could think of the inventory if you were, were doing this on a, a three by five card kind of thing. There would be a card in each store for each book telling the quantity on hand and the price of that book. There's one other thing that's commonly modeled in an entity relationship diagram, and those are subtypes. Sometimes, for instance, 
Um, there are multiple types within a single or multiple types of entities within a master entity. A person at a university could be a student, a person could be a professor, a person could be staff, a person could be administration, a person could be a, a grad student or a undergrad student. So you can see that, that there are various types of entities that all share common attributes because all people have names, student ID numbers, email address, telephone number. Um, so we, we model that using the subtype. There are two types of subtypes. There's the non-exclusive subtype and then the exclusive subtype. For instance, in the example I just gave of students or people at a university, the those would be non-exclusive subtypes because I could be a professor and be taking a class. I could be both a professor and a student. I could be a staff member and a student. So you can see, or I could be a faculty member teaching a class. I could be a staff member with my day job and adjuncting the class, and I could be taking a class. So I could actually be a member of, of multiple classes. So that was a non-exclusive subtype. There are other subtype relationships that are exclusive. For instance, if you had a, a veterinarian system, you would have an animal entity, but then you would subtype that as a cat entity with various cat things. You'd have a dog entity with various properties of dog that don't have, that aren't properties of a cat. You would also have another entity maybe called a horse or a, a parrot or something that would have properties of a horse or properties of a parrot. It makes total sense though that an animal can't be both a cat and a dog. An animal can't be both a horse and a parrot, so it only has one subtype, but still belongs to the master entity of animal. So that would be an exclusive subtype. Let's look at some examples. The subtype symbol is, is the little bell shape that, that you see here. An inclusive subtype is a bell with without any markings in it, and an exclusive subtype is shown as the bell shape with an X. The primary key of the type and the primary key of the subtype are usually the same. So the primary key of the subtype would be a foreign key and the same primary key as the master type in both the inclusive and the exclusive subtypes. Here in this example, we have a person master type, and a person can be an employee, a person can be a customer, and a person can be a vendor, somebody we buy product from. Notice that all of the common things about a person, their personness, is in the person table. Last name, first name, address, city, state, zip, country. An employee, though, has job title, salary, office number, number of dependents to calculate their taxes, and lots of other attributes that only belong to an employee. We don't want to store that about a customer. We don't want to know that about a vendor. We just need to know that about an employee. Customer, for instance, would have a salesperson and a shipping address. And what are the credit terms that we've extended this customer? We don't have that information for an employee or a vendor because a vendor doesn't have a salesperson. They have a purchasing manager, which is somebody different. A remit address would be where do we send the payments to? They might have a physical address at one place that we put in their person table, but they would then we would mail the check or mail the payments to yet another address. So that would be a special address just for being a vendor. Here's an example of an exclusive subtype. For instance, a vehicle with its make, model, gear, new cost, value, number of cylinders, how big is the engine in cubic centimeters, could either be a car, could be a truck, or it could in fact be a motorcycle. A car would have doors. Maybe that's what we want to track about cars, but a truck would have towing capacities and gross vehicle weight and hauling capacities. A motorcycle would have the properties of, does it have saddlebags? Because a car doesn't have saddlebags or not, or does it have a pizza box on the back to, to haul food or, or, or not for food delivery? 
you wouldn't have one of a pizza box on the back of your truck or on the back of your car. So you can see how the relationship, the subtype relationship here is exclusive. You can only be a car or a truck or a motorcycle. You can't be two or three of the same. This concludes the presentation titled Entity Relationship Diagramming. This presentation is copyright 2019 by James M. Renault, Ph.D. You can contact me at jrenault at shawnee.edu. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. And I'd like to say thank you for watching.